classic heist caper The Lavender Hill Mob is getting a cinema release. But which of these 40s and 50s film fancies are slightly subversive? And which have dated less well, Dunny one? Wanting a look at Dublin in the late 1940s might like this. But there's not much else especially compelling about this weird Walter Mitty-ish comedy about a park loafer hoping to finance a one-way trip. To the South Seas by helping rich people who have fallen over. Inspired. By the anywhere-but-here mood of post-war privations, this is pretty charmless and almost completely tone-deaf to the class-ethnic sensitivities of a crew of posh Brits rolling around the Irish capital. Not director Charles Crichton's finest hour. Not especially subtle anti-TV screed. Structured like La Ronde with a television set passed from household to household, sowing unexpected crises in its wake. Stanley. Holloway? By then second to Alec Guinness as Ealing's star performer, had the showy linking role of music hall devil. But the whole struggles to transcend its theatrical and pro-theater origins. Adapted as it is from a play by Arnold Ridley, later to achieve immortality as Private Godfrey in Dad's Army. Another play. Adaptation that doesn't quite overcome its stage roots. But it has an interesting slant on the tail end of Empire. A bluff union man played by Eric Portman in professional Yorkshireman mode, is sent out by the Labour government to oversee a restive Mediterranean colony, a fictional cross between Cyprus and Gibraltar, and tries to get the local people on side by supporting a dock workers' strike. But it's small-c conservative ending, in which the Labour aid agrees to cooperate with the wily colonial office chappie already in place. Really doesn't get to the heart of why Britain was divesting itself of its overseas possessions in the first place. 